Good morning everybody. Terry here at D-Lab. This is a follow-up video to the Fender Fiberverb clone build that I'm doing for a fellow. I finally got those parts in that I've been waiting for. It's been really delaying progress on the project, right? To tell you the truth, I got tired of waiting. I kept checking the tracking number and it was just sitting there and it sat there for like two weeks at this postal service. And I thought, man, I can't do this anymore. So I reordered all the parts and they showed up within two days via FedEx. And I thought, man, great. I finally got everything mounted on the chassis, all the stuff I was missing. So now I'm at the point where I can wire it. Then yesterday, when I came home, there was a box sitting on my porch. Yeah, the parts that I've been waiting on. This shows a ship date of 217, and I finally got it yesterday, March 5th. <laughs> so on here it says US priority mail, right? Look at there, Express. Yeah, good job, guys. So I've got some spare parts now. So that's cool. It's stuff I use anyway. So no big deal. All right. The Vibroverb is coming along great. Everything is mechanically mounted. Got all the nice CTS pots in here. I'm gonna give you some close-up views because I put in some little D-Lab improvements that'll make this a great amp. Here we go. So we'll start top side. There's really not a whole lot to see. Obviously I have all my transformers, chokes, tube sockets installed, fuse holder, power switches, speaker jacks, interfacing for tremolo and reverb devices. And of course a catboard. One thing you'll notice a little bit different about this catboard, it's mounted with studs rather than the sheet metal screws going down into the chassis. I have an issue with that, okay? I'll go into that a little bit later. Let's flip this thing upside down. Take a look bottom side because that's where it's good. Here we go, bottom side tour of the Vibroverb project. I pretty much have everything just kind of loosely in place. I wanted to make sure that all the hardware items would install properly. You see we have an extra hole here. It's because this model of the Vibroverb did not use that control, okay? So the front plate actually covers that. So we got all of our pots in. These are the nice CTS pots with the brass shafts. Switchcraft jacks, okay? Our little slide switches there for the brightness. Bottom side of all those Belton uh, Michaelex tube sockets. My two Carling power switches. And of course the eyelet board. And she is mounted with studs just like the cap board is on top. The reason I do that is, you know, back in the day when Fender was throwing these things together, they would use sheet metal screws and they protrude down through the chassis and poke out of the top. And the cat board would also have sheet metal screws and they poked in through the bottom. I would always get myself nicked on those screws. I understand they did it for efficiency, but I have elected to use studs. Okay, So I have these number eight studs holding the eyelet board. Obviously, uh, you know, when the eyelet board's all populated and she's ready to mount, you won't be removing this, but I always like to do this little trick. Get to pop out of here. So I install rubber grommets on the chassis. These are glued to kind of support the board, all right? And then, of course, the studs will draw it down. And what's nice about this is, you know, you see a lot of those boards and the older amps that get all wavy. It's because there's no support down there, right? So it doesn't have a flat surface that it's holding down on, so it likes to kind of do this over time. So that should eliminate it. Plus, the studs make board removal much easier, and you don't have to worry about stripped out sheet metal screws. So let's take a look at the power supply area. Got my little negative bias rectification board sitting here. Here's my bias adjustment pot, but you'll notice that there's these terminal boards that are installed. 
I do that on all my builds, and here's the reason why. When your power cord comes in, Fender would simply land it to the accessory AC socket, which this amp doesn't have. They'd hit the fuse holder and, of course, string over to the power switch, right? But what I like to do is, you know, you got the power cord coming in, rather than just having loose leads flying around, I like to land them. So this terminal board provides grounding for the power cord. It also provides ground for this orange wire, which is the internal shield of the power transformer. And the line taps that they have, this one has multiple voltage line taps on the primary. They are going to also lay here on the terminal board and they'll terminate the proper colors for the 120 volt input. So that keeps all your power on this side of the chassis plus provides a nice soldered ground okay rather than using the stud of a power transformer. This little ground will go over to the negative bias board. Okay, Over here we have another terminal board and if you look they're all tied together. This is just a grounding point. Okay, So this is soldered to the frame of the terminal board and then these studs are also soldered direct to the chassis because we have the filament line ground, you got your high voltage center tap, all that's going to land here plus it gives me a termination point for the resistors that come off the bias pot. So this is a really nice addition you just have to make some little itty bitty holes for the screws to come up through, solder it, and it really cleans up the wiring of the amp. Alright, take a look here at a different angle. You see our brass plate for our ground plane. It's loose right now, but we're going to have ground runners coming from the eyelet board that hit that plate. And I'm going to use this 18 gauge tinned wiring for that. Okay, So it has some pretty robust grounds going to the plate and of course I will be roughing up the metal here and soldering these plates direct to the chassis so we're not just relying on the mounting of pots to provide that ground. So this is another thing that you should always keep in mind when you're building these amps. You want your power ground over here, you want your preamp grounds over here. That helps to reduce noise on these amp builds. All right, so that's where we're at with the Vibraverb build. As you can see, I'm taking my time. I'm being very meticulous because I want this guy to be thrilled when he gets this amplifier. In the next video, we'll have the power supply wired and the eyelet board will be populated and we'll start landing to the pots. Video after that, maybe we can do an initial power up and see this thing starting to come to life. It's a great project. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm going to get out of here and start wiring. We'll see you.